So, um, my first question for you, Jim, is how long have you been doing art? Well, I've been painting since I was building plastic model cars as a kid. I'd get a small uh, glass bottle of oil-based enamel paint and I'd do the engine or the interior or something on the car. And then I'd look around and I'd say, I wonder what would look color, what, how this would look in this color. Like, a, you know, I might have had silver or black or something like that. So I'd continue painting things until I ran out of paint. And um, I'd say that's when I first got started is since I could hold a brush. <laughs> so you've been doing this for a while then? Yes. Um, what kind of art do you enjoy creating the most? Anything but a landscape, a portrait, or a still life. <laughs> Other than that, the field is pretty much open. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes still lifes can get pretty boring, to be honest. Well, in, you know, with a portrait, you have to do it justice. And uh, I'm not always that confident. In high school, we had to do something like that. And Twiggy was a model at the time, very well known for her looks. And so I painted her. But with her looks, I only needed to do half of her face and it told the whole story. So then I didn't have to get the balance right or the left and the right, everything just perfect. It was fine. For your pieces, how long does it typically take to finish one? Well, I have some that come together fairly quick. And when that happens, I know that um, I've done it right, something's happening. But a lot of them are much more extensive and I need to go shopping for things. I need to find the right thing, maybe go online, research what's available, uh, get it shipped in. I've gotten things from uh, Dollhouse Supply uh, to you name it. And uh, so some of them can be kind of lengthy. I've got one now that's delayed because of some broken glass that I need to find just the right piece to replace it with. But I have others that I'm working on all the time. So there might be two, three, four that I can work on while I'm waiting for other things to happen. Could you tell me a little bit more about the artwork you brought with you today? Well, this one uh, is uh, a tribute to Marcel Duchamp. Some would consider him the father of modern art. Some might not consider him the father of modern art, but uh, he inspired me. Uh, he was quite unusual in his work, and he also, uh, as far as I'm familiar with, he only did one window uh, in part of his collection. Um, um, and this is a tribute to Marcel Duchamp. Uh, he did a number of things like this, and it was a study of motion and depth. And he did about five, six, maybe ten of them. And. Uh, the window that, I'm not sure if I was inspired by it or, if it or what it was, but he did a window and entered it into a show. It was kind of a light green pastel color and every single pane was covered with black leather. You see, Marcel Duchamp, he was 30 years old at the end of the First World War and uh, I think he's very effective. And I think the black out windows might have been when they were having bombing raids and they had to block out the windows so, uh, you know, it helped protect them. Um, also in this, uh, he did nude descending a staircase as part of his uh, step into cubism. And later on, he got completely above art and didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. And he played chess for the rest of his life and he was so into it. It made his wife very mad and she glued his chess pieces to his chessboard. Well, that's one reaction. <laughs> well, I don't know that that stopped him from playing chess. <laughs> So it used to come down to about here, mm -hmm. and every single pane had a, a piece of uh, lace in it. So it, as that one was a tribute to Marcel Duchamp, this was tribute to lace. Uh, that's what I called most of them before, and because uh, they would have a theme. And many of them now still have a theme, but I don't call it a tribute, I give them actual names. <laughs> um, but this one, I was 
like I say, it used to be a four pane window. I made a trip to New Orleans, which uh, I always come back with good vibes and creativeness from there. I saw that somebody had cut up a window and rather than, because I used to use whole windows and that's what was quite lengthy in getting them completed because there's so much space there. So I decided to cut some of mine down. This, like I say, this was an existing window and I cut, I say this piece and this piece out of it. This piece right here was a mirrored piece and as you can see these butterflies in here, well this one escaped. And then over here there was another one that escaped and it was bigger. And on the outside edge I had a lace butterfly mounted to plexiglass and it also escaped. And as it escaped it was getting its color back. So the color was out here but it was fading to blank or white because it still had confinement. But I really like working with the single pegs now because they do come together quicker than a big four, six, eight, ten pane window. And uh, they're much lighter too. I bet. <laughs> but if I cut up a six pane window, I get three pieces out of it. So there's a little bit of loss, but I like it a bit more than doing the full ones. I've done a couple abstracts lately and uh, I like that a lot because I really like working with glass shards. Uh, I do cut some of my glass but the shards have a life of their own that I try to find it. Um, one of the first things I learned in art is the use of negative and positive space. And this is a good example of that as this would be negative and these would be positive spaces. Uh, one thing I like about working with windows is I have a certain amount of depth to play with and on the front and or on the back. If you notice this piece here, it's actually coming out this way, adding more depth yet. This window is actually cut into here, glued, it is one piece. We have a little bit of copper and uh, some rod iron. This is uh, called cubismi, which is French for cubism. And although Picasso is known as the, maybe a father of cubism, there was also a Frenchman named, I mean, think his last name is Barack. I'm not sure if it was George or not, but him and Picasso uh, were the instigators, if you will, of cubism. But Picasso got all the glory and everything, so <clears throat> This is named after the Frenchman. This one was done before the other one, and this one I call Cubismo because uh, it's the bigger piece, and Picasso being the Spanish, Cubismo is uh, the Spanish for Cubism, but he was the bigger figure in Cubism, so I gave him the bigger window. Uh, again, this one is glued and cut so it fits inside the window. Uh, if you want to know exactly what things are, this would be an eyebrow, this would be an eye, a nose, and down here lower on the body, I would say that represents a uh, breast. So I know so far you've mentioned quite a few artists that have inspired you. Like, who do you think gave you like the most inspiration? Um, I'd have to say Marcel Duchamp because if you look at the body of his work, it's so diversified um, and he had some other bigger pieces of glass and some of it was fractured and uh, you just have to go and look at and study his life work and, uh, and I think then you'll see how anybody could be inspired by him. Like I say, he was uh, known as the father of modern art. Works for me. So, uh, the next question is, um, you know, throughout the pieces you've shown us, we, or I've noticed that you tend to use like windows for your pieces. Is there any special meaning behind that? You know, I, when I was growing up, I saw a lot of people doing things with windows I didn't much care for. And some of them were country style. It was just like a wash of maybe some flowers or a rooster or something. And I looked at that and I thought, 
I can do some real art in a, that kind of a format instead of something that looked uh, something that I didn't want to be involved with. But Windows uh, became my canvas. Uh, again, as I say, I, because of the depth that they provide, I have so much more flexibility and creativeness to work with that space that uh, there's, there's no reason to look at other things, that, uh, canvases, so to speak. Now, I do a lot of other uh, silly little crazy things so with uh, found objects and other little small picture frames and things, and that's fun, but uh, for the most part, it's windows. And I've uh, like I say, I used to work with a lot of big ones, and I've cut them down now, but I like more windows that have interest. Maybe it's an arch, maybe it's the diamond shape. Uh, all day long, you can shop for windows, uh, and I haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> I took a road trip one time uh, to Cleveland and Chicago, and I came back with 13 windows. Whew. And it's a good thing I didn't have a passenger in the car because there was no room. <laughs> Do you have any advice for like newer beginning artists? Um, I would say try to get some uh, basic instruction and do what you feel. Uh, I wouldn't listen to too many people, as you can tell I don't. Um, I like to be different. Uh, I hear that from people all the time that uh, they don't see anything else like my work. And I've been to a number of shows, museums and galleries. And they're right, there's not much out there like what I do. There's some one-offs uh, that I like and, and some I don't, but I like having that unique niche. And if every artist could create something like that, then art would be better for it. Well, this uh, particular cubism piece was hanging in a gallery and I had to go retrieve it. Uh, it was hanging in the Dancing Crane Gallery in Bradenton. They have uh, Village of the Arts over there just south of downtown. And uh, unfortunately, it's been closed due to COVID for a while, but they're going to be opening up. But uh, she did open up so I could retrieve this one. And uh, she wants me to bring back a lot more. <laughs> So uh, I'm looking forward to the a new season over there at the Dancing Crane Gallery in Bradenton. I usually show here locally at the museum gift shop. Uh, I recently joined uh, Florida Wildflower Studio up in Frostproof. Uh, so they have a couple of my pieces up there. Originally, the reason I uh, was interested in their area up there is because uh, I read in one of the art magazines around that they were gonna do a class on windows. And they had some from this 100-year-old building that they were offering to their students. And I called Jackie up there, and uh, I just asked her if I could help in any way, you know, to lend my 40 years of expertise to her students, uh, just so they could get a, another perspective on the possibilities. And so that's how I got hooked up with them there. They have not yet held the class, but I'm looking forward to, to when they do.